Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to learn how we can implement bubble sort recursively. So although there is no point of implementing bubble sort using recursion because iterative codes are faster, but still we are going to do this exercise just for practice and the learning purpose. Okay, so we are going to learn how we can convert iterative codes such as loops, how we can convert those loops into recursion. Okay. So they might not might not be beneficial for bubble sort, but for some other problem, you might require this kind of a technique. So let's see how we can do it. So let a quick recap of bubble sort. So what we have uh, learned in bubble sort was, uh, for example, if we have array like this five, four, three, two, one, then we did a pairwise kind of a swapping. Uh, we compare the two adjacent elements. So we compare five and four. So it becomes four, five, uh, three to one then we compare these two it becomes four three five two one then you compare these two it becomes four three two one five or uh, two five one and then we compare these two it becomes four three two one five so effectively after the completion of internal one iteration of this entire loop the largest element uh, moves to the end of the array okay so we do it n n minus one time so that the n minus one large elements uh, move to their right position in the array so this is what we do so we are going to do this in two steps so in the first step we are going to convert this loop into a recursive code and this code we will uh, we will use at as it is okay so we'll first try to convert this code into recur recursion code then in the next step we are will we'll, we'll try to convert this code into a recursion code okay so what is this loop doing? This loop is running n minus one times. So effectively, if I say I want to do bubble sort on the array. Okay. So after one time, the inner loop is run, we have the largest element, which is at the end of the array. So that's the, the initial problem was of the size n, but after one iteration, we have a problem of size n minus one. So again, we can say, okay, we will do bubble sort on this small array and Next time we will have four at the end of the array. Maybe we will have something like this and we will say, okay, we will do a, a bubble sort on, on a problem of size n minus minus two. And effectively when this n reduces to one, that means we have only one element left, then we can stop. So that would form our base case. So let me start a new file and try to write code. So I can say bubble sort recursive and we will copy this code here and uh, we'll we'll remove everything from this code and we'll try to build a recursive code okay so bubble sort recursive we are getting the array we are getting the number of elements and now what we need to do we need to write the base case if n is uh, one that means only one element is left in the bubble sort then we can say return the array sorted otherwise whatever elements i have so i can start from for int j equal to zero j less than n minus one because we only need to go till the second last element okay j plus plus and i need to compare the current element with the next element if a of j is greater than a of j plus one then we will say okay let's do the swapping aj and aj plus one so the inner loop is written as it is whatever we had and for the outer loop i'm going to say okay after this inner loop is executed, the largest element is at the end of the array. And now I can reduce the array size by one. So for example, if we had five, four, three, two, one, so it would become four, three, two, one, five. This is what we have seen. And now we are going to say, we are going to do a bubble sort on the smaller array that is four, three, two, one. Okay. For this, I'm again going to call this recursive function, bubble sort recursive array and the size of the array is now n minus one we have not changed the starting index but we have changed the size of the array okay now if you look carefully what is this code going to do it is going to actually run bubble sort where we have converted the outer loop into a recursive call and a base condition okay so this becomes a stopping criteria and this becomes the update criteria okay and yes uh, so if I show you the output for int i equal to zero, i less than n, i plus plus, I can just see out array of i. I build the code and we are going to run it.
okay uh so yes for this array uh you can see the elements are now in the sorted order and that means our bubble sort is working perfectly fine so let us talk about the next step that we want to do in this problem what we want is we also want to convert this code into the recursive code okay so i'll just uh, copy this entire program and i will call it as bubble sort recursive 2 and now you can see this loop has a variable j and if we want to convert this loop into recursion we need to pass in this parameter somewhere here okay so what i will do i will um, pass a variable j and what i will do is i will check so what is this loop doing if you look carefully for for example if the elements are 5 4 3 2 1 so j is going from the element 0 till n minus uh, 2 okay and if and it, it does a pairwise swapping so what i can do i can say this recursion call will do th two things either it will run in the iteration for the outer loop or it will run the iteration for the inner loop so that will depend upon the value of n that will depend upon the value of j so if j reaches this index okay if j reaches this index then that means my work is done for one iteration and i need to start the new iteration Th that is this one okay so basically uh, let me try to show you what i am saying if j equals n minus 1 okay then that case i will call a bubble sort recursive 2 i'll call this method and i will give the array and i will reduce the value of n and i will reset j equal to 0 okay and we will return so basically i am saying reduce the problem size and reset j to 0 that means one iteration of inner loop is completed now i will remove this call here i will also remove this loop here uh, i will also remove this one and uh, otherwise we are going to say if j is taking any of the values in this range okay so if j is lying in this range then we will do the pairwise swapping thing and after a pairwise swapping i will call on the next index i will say okay bubble sort recursive 2 a n minus 1 and whatever is the value of j i am going to call it as j plus 1 so effectively this is going to run the inner loop because we are saying okay if 5 is uh, greater than 4 swap them 4 5 3 2 1 and make a recursive call on this part so it says okay j is here so we are not going to reduce the value of n because j is not equal to the last element so this part will execute and it will again do the swapping and j will be changed to j plus 1 so j is now here so it becomes 4 3 5 2 1 and j is now here okay and then it becomes 4 3 2 5 1 j is here then it becomes 4 3 2 1 5 and j is here so after this step j is now at the last element so what we do we want to start the new iteration in which j should be reset to 0 and the value of n should be reduced by a value of 1 so if you look carefully you will realize that we are doing the same thing but written in a different form okay so we are saying okay reduce the value of n by a factor of 1 and array is same and j is now set to 0 so this is set to 0 okay so by modifying this code we have entirely eliminated all the loops and this bubble sort program is now completely recursive code so we just did uh, it as a practice exercise you would often not require such kind of things uh, if the things that you can do it using loops do it using loops as well okay so here i can pass in the j as zero and now we can run the code and see so yes uh, okay we are not uh, getting the right answer for this one mm. yes uh, so there is one mistake uh, by mistake i have reduced the value of n here this should be set as n only and let us build the code and let us try to run it again okay so yes we are getting the sorted array and it is correct okay so uh, 
n will only change when the outer loop iteration is going to get completed so that will complete when j equal to n minus 1 only then we will reduce n otherwise we will just move the j variable forward so that the swapping at the next two index can take place so i hope uh, this one is clear thanks for watching